What's up everybody, it's Sean here and I'm back today to give you guys my long overdue review of the Air Jordan 5 Retro in the Stealth colorway. This pair dropped in late March of this year, but I took an L on the initial release, but I was finally able to grab these on a restock on footlocker.ca last week. So here I am with a super late review. So these guys retailed for 190 US dollars or $245 here in Canada, and the official colorway for this shoe is white, hyper royal, stealth, and black. If you know me, you know I'm not a huge fan of the Air Jordan 5. It's okay, but it's not really a silhouette that I consider to be my absolute favorite. So if you're wondering why of all colorways was I super eager to grab this one, well the original Stealth 5s from 2006, it was actually one of the first Air Jordans I ever got in my collection. And while I don't have the OG pair anymore, safe to say this reissue though it's slightly tweaked from the original, still feels really special to me. So diving into the details, the majority of the upper is constructed using this very tumbled white colored leather. To the touch, you can really feel the softness of the leather, and I felt like it was pretty decent quality. Wrapping on the front toe cap, we have another overlay of white leather, and you can see that the toe box of these Jordan 5s has that sleek look to it, similar to the majority of the Jordan 5s that I released recently. Moving downwards, covering the eyelets, we have this white colored TPU, and then covering the quarter panel of the shoe, we have more of that tumbled white leather, and then in the center, we have the signature netting, which is done in the semi-translucent white colored finish. We have more of that tumbled white leather wrapping around the back end of the sneaker, and then embroidered on the back of the shoe, we have a black color Jumpman which differs from the OG Stealth 5s where the Jumpman on that pair was blue. For the laces, these come with these flat white colored laces, and right between the bottom lace and the toe box, there's a small hit of white colored nylon. Underneath the laces on the bottom half, we have more of that signature netting that we saw earlier on the sides of the shoe, and at the very top of the tongue, this is constructed out of this reflective 3M material in silver, and we have this blue Jumpman embroidered in the center. This being an Air Jordan 5, the laces intertwine through this lace lock, which is done in this translucent finish with this blue colored toggle in the center. The back side of the tongue is lined in this black colored finish, which again is different from the OG Stealth 5s, whereas that pair was lined in blue. And we have the Air Jordan tag stitched on in upside down fashion. For the insoles, these come with your standard foam insole. It's lined in this blue fabric at the top, and we have a white colored Jumpman stamped on the heel. So the upper of these Air Jordan 5s sits atop this full-length polyurethane foam midsole. For the most part, the midsole is painted in this grey color, but underneath the forefoot, this jagged piece or the shark teeth is painted in black paint with a speckling of blue paint within it. And then underneath the heel, we have this cutout which reveals the Nike Air Sole technology that's found within the midsole. Turning the shoe over to the bottom, here we have your classic Air Jordan 5 outsole. So we have this hit of blue rubber at the very top, black rubber in the center, and we have these translucent hits on both the forefoot and the back heel, and we have this blue Jumpman underneath the forefoot. So in my opinion, I don't know about you guys, but I have a love and hate relationship with clear icy soles. I think they look amazing when they're brand new, but I'm always paranoid that I'm going to be stepping in something really dirty or getting them wet, which quickens the yellowing process. So that's where a company like Afteca comes in. Afteca has spent almost the last two years designing sole protectors, insole protectors, as well as crease protectors too. And unlike a lot of other competitors on the market, their protective outsoles are designed specifically for different silhouettes and specific sizes. And it gives your shoes that added layer of protection to protect it from dirt and to prolong the yellowing process. And I know I deal with this issue a lot with my Air Jordans, but oftentimes even after one wear, the Jordan or Nike branding on the insole rubs off right away. So their insole protectors cover up that logo in the insole heel with a clear 3M removable film. And last but not least, their crease protectors are designed with an ultra impact yet soft material that protects your shoes from those ugly creases while still feeling comfy on feet. So again, if you're someone like me who has that love-hate relationship with icy outsoles, definitely check out Fteca. Like I said, they have protectors specific for models like the Air Jordan 5, the Air Jordan 11, and the Air Jordan 1, and they're made specifically to your size. So I'll add their website, their Instagram, all that good stuff down below, so be sure to check them out and show them some love. So that breaks down the look and the construction and all you need to know about these Stealth 5s. For those wondering how these fit, Overall, I feel like they do fit like the recent Air Jordan 5 retros. So what I mean by that is I'm a true size 10, slightly on the wider side, and I got these in a 9.5, which is a half size down. This is the same size I got in the recent Fire Red retros as well, and I'm not sure exactly what it is. Maybe it's the remastered shape of the shoe, but I feel like with these recent leather Jordan 5s, they do fit a little bit roomy. So if you have really wide feet, or if you don't mind a little bit extra room in the toe box, you can definitely stick true to size, but if you like more of that secure, snug fit, then I'd recommend going a half size down. 
Next up, in terms of comfort, I feel like the Jordan 5, this one included, is pretty average from a comfort standpoint. The foam in the midsole feels pretty stiff, and honestly, there's not too much from a softness and step in comfort perspective. But if you've worn Jordan 5s before, you know how they feel. They're pretty firm and flat to the ground, and they're gonna be fine for just everyday casual use, but don't expect too much from a softness standpoint. Finally, in terms of the overall quality and craftsmanship on this pair, all in all, I was pretty impressed. Like I mentioned earlier, the tumbled leather they used on the upper felt pretty soft, and to me at least, it felt like it was pretty good quality. And the overall build on my pair was pretty solid, there was no specific issues I had with my pair, so safe to say, I was pretty impressed when I got them in hand. With all that being said now, let's lace these up and I'll show you guys how these look on feet. I know these Stealth 5s aren't necessarily the most popular colorway of the Air Jordan 5, but again, just for sentimental reasons, this one was a must cop for me. I would have wished that they kept this true to the OG look, but the tweaks they made weren't too drastic and all in all, it's a pretty good and pretty close reproduction. So let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about this Air Jordan 5 Retro in the Stealth colorway. Was this a pair that you copped or dropped? And let me know your overall thoughts on this colorway down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Give me a follow on Instagram at esco8. You can check out my Twitter at sean.go and visit my website as well at seangoca So until next time, thank you so much for tuning in. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this review and I'll catch you guys all in the next one.